So this video is about a very accurate quartz watch. The watch in question is accurate to 10 seconds a year and that's because of the very special movement that's inside it that was developed by Bulliver. It's a quartz movement and it runs much faster than your average quartz movement. It runs at a frequency of 262 kilohertz. Now the watch in question is the Bulliver Sea King. So this came to me this week for a change to its battery and I was quite taken with this watch, uh, particularly because of its special movement, but also because of its heft and business-like style, the confidence in itself that this watch has. So we're going to do not only a battery change and pressure test on this watch, but we're going to do a little review on it as well. So let's get on with the video. 50 meters worth of water pressure there. And what that means is basically pressure And here it is then, the Bulliver Sea King. And the first thing that I think is pretty obvious with this watch is that it is, this is a chunky piece. Uh, not only is it big, I'm including the crown here. Uh, the width of this watch is 51 millimeters, which is, which is getting, you know, sort of big, big. Uh, it's a full centimeter wider than the new uh, Rolex Datejust. So, and it is machined out of steel uh, and is very, very solid. And this from the moment you sort of take hold of it, it shouts business-like tool diving watch at you. It's got the pucker diving strap on it here. The bezel, unlike the Invicta Pro Diver, um, which I reviewed some time ago, uh, and I mentioned there was a little bit of play in the bezel there. Um, nothing drastic, but there was a little bit of play. When we look at this thing, there is no play at all in the bezel. When it finds its location, it is stuck there. And there is 120 clicks around so you know that is business like the bezel as you can see is attached with these um hexagonal screws here allen key um uh, type affair uh the lines are very clean there's lots of sharp edges it is a very business like masculine piece um but the thing that is really interesting me about this watch is not the style of it. Um, although I think it's it's cool just for the fact that it is so confident in itself. Um, you know, even when you look at the loom, and we'll look at the loom uh, properly in the dark later, and I have to tell you, I've done it already. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, but, you know, I mean, let's take a look at this. We've got this matte black or very very dark charcoal color uh, dial um, these very large luminous indices which you know are meant to work at night and, and by golly you know they they do and then we've got this kind of yeah you know they're outlined in this orange um, and orange and black is very kind of uh, kind of retro 70s uh, diving it's the you know, for those of you that had an action man back in 1973, and I certainly did, I'm sure he had a a suit that was coloured in this orange. Um, so, you know, it, this says marine diving watch um, that, you know, if you uh, meet someone you don't like in an alley on a dark night, you can take it off and throw it hard at their head and they probably won't stand up again. I'm not actually advocating that <laughs> as a course of action, but this is the, what I'm trying to get across here is this is a tough piece of kit. So we're going to open this watch up 
now in a minute because the bit that I'm really interested in oh before we do actually let's just um, let's just unscrew the crown here which although the crown is quite narrow um, or feels narrow because the watch is so large um, it unscrews nicely it is very uh, sensibly guarded by these extensions to the case either side of it um, and let's just move the hands here a minute um, everything on this movement works very positively um, I just pulled that out two clicks and as you see this moves very nice it's very easy to set accurately and the bit that I'm interested in here is the bit that says 262 kilohertz because Boulevard have created this movement and it operates at a frequency you can see there of 262 kilohertz um, which is very very high and as a result when we finally get the uh, get some batteries in this watch and watch the uh, sweep hand sweep it sweeps very very smoothly across so the keyless works on this watch um, are very good we you can let's just screw the crown back down again you see how quick and easy that is to do unscrew it again and what this time we're just going to bring it out to the first position okay and just pop that out gently there's so the first position and then you'll see you know the rapid date change that you've got there okay very nice very positive pull it out again and I can move the hands okay push it all the way back in screw it up very very simple very businesslike um, we like that the movement seems to work very well in that regard uh, and everything is clear visible and made um, for the job this is made to stay dry uh, underwater we've got you know 300 meters uh, which is pretty deep and uh, and also you know be extremely legible um, and readable at all times so let's get the strap off and let's get the back off this watch have a look at the movement um, and change the batteries and well, then we're going to do a pressure test on it because that is the job that I have to do with this watch um, oh one other thing one other thing here before we do that I did actually notice when I looked with the loop earlier that there is a little bit of debris inside the dial um, now I'm hoping and I shall confirm this with the owner of this watch that this watch has been previously opened and, and by somebody because what I found in here is really not terribly acceptable and as I can hear my wife coming now bless her with a cup of coffee um, I am going to get some a large magnification on this now and show you what I mean thank you. okay so welcome to the uh, average watchmakers view of the world here and you can see the kind of magnification I'm using here because here is the date window um, but it's not the date window with its nice little sort of stepped orange frame that you can see there that I'm interested in what it is is if we track up here go past the hands and just focus in there you can see that on the dial we've got some debris okay now you can just see how small it is uh, but nevertheless there is debris on the dial and I can actually see it a speck of debris um, with the naked eye uh, now now that I know where it is so you know just tracking around here um, looking for anything else you see again we got something else here on the edge there I don't know what that is particularly um, as I say I'm at a very high magnification and the uh, you know the good news is the implementation of the indices and the hands because are very very sharp um, really look at that you can see the grain in the metal there um, uh, and you know the dial and everything is a great job on this watch um, but if this watch has not been opened and this is how it has come 
from the Bulova manufacturing facility, then you know that's not acceptable in my view. Um, that is garbage. Uh, I can't see what it is um, precisely. The often with an older watch it will be loom that's come away and of course you need to be a bit careful of that if it's tritium because you don't want to snort it up your nose as a watchmaker because it's radioactive um, I don't think that's loom I think all the loom on here is tight um, it could be a little bit of dead skin from under someone's fingernails um, that's kind of what it looks like to me uh, which is a bit gross so yeah we got a little bit of foreign body going on in there um, so but you know not a massive thing uh, just a little bit disappointed with it really so um, but this is the big deal the 262 kilohertz so let's get the watch open and see the movement that brings us that kind of high frequency oscillation uh, a little while ago I promised you a look at the loom and it's now the middle of the night um, so we have some darkness and I am going to turn off the... Okay so the plot thickens and I think Boulevard are definitely off the hook because I've just gone to take the back off this watch and uh, you know naturally as, as any uh, watchmaker worth his salt um, would do. Uh, I take very great care to protect the back um, when I take the back of a watch off. Um, unfortunately that has not always previously been the case and as I scroll around here you can see for example that you know we have some damage. Uh, this is where somebody's put a tool in um, and I don't know what the hell they were using there. If you look at the one o'clock position, it's like they've stuck some kind of screwdriver and hit it with a hammer or something. Um, you know, someone has done some damage there. So the back of this watch has been opened. And, you know, <laughs> that guys, that is not by a Bulliver employee at all. Um, you'd be shown the door immediately, I think. If you did something like that um, in a in a good company like this, so that's what they should look like, um, and that's what they should always look like when you've finished, and not that guys don't hack away at these things. Uh, get the proper tool and protect the back um, with some polythene, uh, and be very careful how you use um, the torque to uh, take the back of the watch off, to take the back of the watch off. With this watch, of course, being such a big case, you can get a lot of torque on it. So it actually came off, you know, because I used the right tool uh, nice and easily. If you use the wrong tool, uh, you will, you know, be in a world of hurt and you will uh, do damage like this. So I think Bulliver are off the hook. This watch has been, um, someone's been in the back of it before. Uh, there we are. And now that we've taken the tension off the back, we can just uh, take the rest of it off with our fingers like so and reveal the movement. And the first thing that you see, um, which is actually amazing to me, is a massive battery. I have never seen that before. Um, you know, we're normally dealing with quite small batteries. Um, but this new movement is a revelation. Um, we have a chunky, great button battery in there, um, which I guess is part of the you know design of this interesting watch, um, which is the reason I wanted to open it up in the first place. So uh, that's uh, new. Um, and yeah, great. We got a lot of power. Um, uh, we're going to take that out now and take a look at the movement and procure one of these uh, three volt batteries. Okay, so we have the movement out now, as you can see, um, which is great because it, um, you've been itching to do this. It gives me a chance to uh, do this and get the debris off the dial there. I'll, I'll do that with a loop, finish that with a loop in a minute. 
But yeah, we want to make sure that the dial is immaculate before it goes back in. Um, some other pieces that we've got here. Um, uh, we've got the uh, movement holder here. And we've got the battery isolation sheet here and the stem. Um, it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, the, I'm going to turn the movement over now um, so that you can have a quick look at that. He said kicking the tripod um, because the movement uh, has some jewels in it, which is nice. Okay, so just focusing now on the interesting part of the movement to me at least. And that is, you know, these three nice jewels that you can see there. And that denotes to me that Bolivar, you know, actually care about this movement and the longevity of it because, you know, these jewels are there to, to limit the friction and the wear inside the movement. Um, in a mechanical movement, they are to assist in the accuracy. Um, but really with the quartz movement, you know, they're not going to affect the accuracy that much because that's determined by the oscillation, the natural oscillation rate of the crystal. Uh, but what they will do is, you know, limit the wear on the movement and uh, movements like all mechanical things will wear out eventually. So Bolivar have taken some precaution here to, you know, give um, probably one of the fastest moving pivots here a nice jewel uh, with a capstone as well by the looks of it so you know really quite impressed with that um, that is is really nice okay so it's time to now describe what is so special about this Bolivar Quartz movement and it all starts with the humongous dustbin lid size battery here and essentially what happens is the battery uh, powers some circuitry and we'll draw a little IC here to um, stand for the circuitry, it's a little chip there and that in turn excites a quartz crystal. Now normally in a quartz watch a quartz crystal is shaped as a two-pronged fork but in this case Bolivar created a quartz crystal with three pongs okay and with their special crystal when it is subjected to the power coming out of this integrated circuit here and associated circuitry this starts to oscillate at a specific frequency and that frequency as we know is 262 kilohertz and this is a very regular beat so um, what you can do then is capture those oscillations into another piece of circuitry and the job of this circuitry is to know how many oscillations um, are coming out of here and throw a stepper motor okay which which drives some cogs which actually drives the second hand around so that then and uh, for completeness sake I guess as it's an engineering drawing we ought to have something like that um, and then you'd have the hands attached here okay and that is essentially it the key thing is that this is at such a high frequency that this part of the mechanism can be made extremely accurate so we are at plus or minus 10 seconds per year and just to give you an idea of um, you know how good that accuracy if you go and buy a brand new uh, Rolex um, date just or, or any of the, the Rolexes they are rated as a chronometer and you will get a, an accuracy normally of about plus or minus 
two seconds a day. Okay, so um, Bulliver uh, with this particular arrangement has, have, has done something really quite special. A normal quartz movement um, uh, would, would, wouldn't have that. It would have two prongs. It would be running at 32 kilohertz and it wouldn't run at plus or 10 seconds a year. It would run at about plus or minus 15 seconds a month. So, you know, that is really the nub of what we have here. So I just wanted to explain that. Okay, so I had to order some uh, new batteries for um, this watch because I don't actually hold the uh, dustbin lid size batteries that this watch takes. And uh, normally um, when I uh, order some batteries for quartz movements, they show up in a box like this. Uh, not so with the Bulliver Seeking. The Bulliver Seeking batteries turn up in a box like this. I can't, e I can't even get it on the frame. It is massive. These batteries are massive. So there we are. We're going to fit one of these now. Um, we're also going to uh, complete an inspection of the gasket. Um, I've had a quick look at it, it looks good. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, give that some very light uh, silicon uh, grease um, just to freshen that up. Uh, and then we are going to make sure there is absolutely no debris inside the case and uh, fit the battery, uh, secure down the case back, um, put in the stem and or you have to do those the other way around of course and uh, then we'll be ready to do a pressure test on this watch. Okay so the battery is back in and the movement is working again and I'll show you the really lovely sweep hand on this watch in a minute um, but before I do that I'm just going to talk up the back um, and again as I mentioned uh, before you need to take great care um, not to mark the case when you do this um, and that's why you can see the case is uh, protected by this um, sort of placky bag that I've got there and also there we want put over the case back um, before we engage the tool to torque up the back. There we are. So as I explained a little bit earlier this watch has the 262 kilohertz movement and that movement is accurate to 10 seconds a year. So there's no point in being uh, sloppy about the way in which you set the time on this watch. So I've just set it using uh, the time on the internet. Um, and you can do that by just Googling the phrase exact time and you'll get a site called time is um, and that'll get you the site down to below the nearest second. So, um, uh, I, I recommend that, especially if you're setting a watch of this capability. There we are. Let's uh, let's dunk this in the tank. Pretty confident it's going to be okay. Um, but we'll start with some reasonably low pressure and then uh, ramp up the water pressure to 50 meters. Um, uh, I will probably cut straight to the 50 meter test. Let's do that. Okay, so you can see that I've pumped up the pressure in the pressure testing tank to um, 50 meters worth of water pressure there. And what that means is basically that the pressure inside the air pocket that you can see there that I'm just focusing in on there um, is equivalent to 50 meters worth of water pressure. Now, if there is any uh, compromise to the uh, case around the movement then of course the air will rapidly move inside the movement and the pressure will equalize so that the pressure inside the watch is also at 50 meters worth of water pressure. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drop the watch down inside the water and gently release 
the air from the air pocket above, which will reduce the pressure in the air pocket above to uh, normal atmospheric pressure. Now, if the watch is compromised, what you will see then is a lot of bubbles coming out of the watch because uh, the pressure inside the watch is much greater than the air pressure uh, outside and it will um, uh, release the air into the water. Okay, um, if that happens, we will clearly um, uh, swiftly remove the watch from the water. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, just pan out slightly, oh, that's in, pan out slightly, uh, tilt the camera down so you can see what's going on. And we're gonna just drop the watch now gently down into the water, okay. It's actually a little hard to push because of the um, the pressure that is inside the tank. Okay, and we've got a little bit of reflection going on there, so it's, it's difficult to see the dial. It's not really the dial we're interested in. We're interested now on observing carefully the case as we gently release the pressure. Now you may see one or two little bubbles coming out, um, f f f and that's trapped air you know, maybe behind the bezel, one or two other places. But in this watch, there's not many places for air to lurk um, around the outside of the case. But we're gonna just release the air pressure now from the top and see what happens. Okay, that wasn't quite as gentle <laughs> as I, <laughs> As I'd intended, and sometimes with um, this particular machine, you do get that issue. Um, thankfully, the uh, the bull of a sea king was was up to the task. Um, if there was a weakness there, uh, releasing the air pressure um, that quickly uh, might have uh, found it out in a more dramatic fashion. Um, uh, but no, it's looking good. So let's just have a little look. Let's just lift this watch up. Um, and you know, there was no dramatic release of air there. Let's just see if I can hang on. Okay, let's lift in the watch up there. Just try and there we go. Okay, getting a lot of reflection from the that's better, like that. Okay, so there you go. Um, the uh, that. 626 kilohertz movement is working away there nicely um, and this watch to me looks to be doing everything that the guys at Bulova intended it to do so that's great so this particular video is a little bit of a hybrid it's a little bit of a watchmaking video um, but also uh, a little bit of a review so I am going to give uh, the scores for this watch now as I see them because um, I think it's worth worth doing it's an interesting piece and uh, and I think people will be interested to know what I think of this particular watch or at least I, I hope they will okay so it's time now to have a look at the scores for the review of this watch which I've kind of built into this video as well as doing a little bit of work on the watch so uh, we're going to look at engineering and build quality first and that will take in things like the movement the keyless works the case the dial the strap the crystal and the loom and then we're going to go and look at uh, what the watch looks like um, and also its versatility as you know a piece that you can wear to different kinds of events and in different kinds of outfits and finally we'll look at the value for money so turning first then to the engineering and build quality and first we're going to look at that movement that i've described in some detail now you know what can i say here the movement scores a 10 out of 10. Uh, you might think i'm being generous in that but you know this thing is accurate to 10 seconds a year 
you know, I might almost buy one just to um, stick on my bench as a reference for all the timepieces that I uh, regularly uh, service and fix because I, I know that that is that watch is going to be giving me really, really spot on time. Um, and also when you open up the movement, you know, uh, a lot of these quartz movements, when you open them up, there aren't any jewels in there. You know, they're relying on, you know, the metal pivot against the metal and sometimes plastic of the um, uh, of the movement. Um, and, you know, that's not a, a great place to be for durability. So, you know, uh, the movement operates plus or minus 10 seconds a year and it's got some jewels in it. Good enough for me. Um, 10 out of 10. Likewise, the case, you know, this case is exactly what it should be. It is sharp. It is rugged. It looks business like the bezel, as we saw, is really, really crisp and firm. So, you know, that is a 10 out of 10. Also, this watch is doing well. So move to the dial. And what can I say? You know, we looked at the dial and the dial is is a 10 out of 10 for 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 what it does you know um even the little date window had that nice little orange trim around it and when we looked at it a very high magnification it wasn't just a simple little trim it was a stepped trim you know and those little steps were were you know fractions of a millimeter across so really good job by uh, Bulliver there um, and also in terms of presentation uh, Bulliver uh, for the record are off the hook uh, the watch had been opened and the foreign bodies that we found inside the case are not an issue that we can attribute to Bulliver I would like to say that for the record okay and um, so turning now quickly to the strap the strap it's it's a it's a tough big strap but it's nothing special i'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 the crystal is sapphire and does the job uh very very clear it's a flat crystal uh it's nothing spectacular but it does the job and it is sapphire so it gets a 9 out of 10 and finally the loom <laughs> we really like the loom uh Getting a perfect loom is difficult because um, a perfect loom, right, is going to stay bright forever and ever and ever. And currently, no loom really does that very well. Um, so I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. So, you know, for engineering and build quality, that is really good. Um, that is some very high scores there. So looking at the watch's looks and versatility. Well, this watch looks great. Um, if you have two air tanks strapped to your back and I think it's called a demand valve uh, in your mouth um, and you know some of those uh, great big uh, metal things on a belt around your waist and you're about to dive for treasure um, the watch looks great on your wrist like that um, it also would look pretty good um, if you're wearing anything casual, leather jacket, that kind of stuff, it is a business like big masculine watch. Um, we like the look of this watch. It's useful in, in a very many circumstances because frankly, these days, most people dress casually most of the time. Um, I, for those people listening, you know, may, there may be the odd one out there that has worn a three-piece suit, you know, all day, every day for the last three weeks. Um, but most of us, frankly, don't. Um, so, you know, it's a big, hefty, masculine watch. Um, uh, you can't wear it to everything, but it looks great. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. And finally, a value for money. Um, I've looked at the price of, uh, of this watch and uh, I, I seem to be able uh, to buy it out there for around about 500 English pounds, um, which is quite a lot of money. And quartz watches tend to be less expensive uh, than mechanical and automatic watches. 
So it's not a an aggressively priced watch, but you are getting that very, very accurate movement. You're getting 300 meters worth of water resistance. Uh, you're getting a very tough, robust, good looking watch. So I have scored it 7.5 out of 10 for value for money. Okay, so let's now sum up these scores. And for the engineering and build quality, those scores come in very, very high at 9.2 out of 10. And as I've said, we've got 8 out of 10 and 7.5 out of 10 for the other two categories. That gives us an overall score uh, when rounded up slightly to 8.25 out of 10. So a very, very solid performance um, by uh, Bulliver. Um, those of you that are watching my videos frequently will will start to see a bit of a trend where um, I am scoring stuff, you know, the stuff that I review scores very high. It's probably because um, I tend to only review watches that I like um, because they're the ones that interest me. And I'm not, not really in the game of taking something that I know not to be very good and uh, publicly embarrassing it in ev in front of everybody that really wants to take the wind out of the sails of the people who um, are wearing those watches. So there we are. That's just the way I operate, I guess. But, you know, this is a solid performance from this very accurate watch by Bulliver, the Seeking. 262 kilohertz guys if you like my videos then please subscribe uh, please like this video give it the thumbs up and hit the bell so that you um, there's a little bell icon at the bottom there so that you're notified when I upload a new video but for the moment from Pembroke Dock uh, that's all I have for you so cheerio for now and god bless